Over the last couple of years, I've used a lot of different tools to make my games, but especially in the last six months as a full-time indie game developer, I've found the set of tools that I like to use every day. So I wanted to share those with you right now. Now I'm not sponsored by any of these applications. Trust me, I asked a few of them and they said, politely said, no, thank you. So this is my unbiased list of things that I simply just use day in and day out. I left links below to all of them as well as timestamps for the different categories of apps we're talking about. Some of these apps are paid. Most of them are going to be free and a bunch of them do have licensing agreements. So especially if you're using these for commercial projects, I would encourage you to read through the licensing agreements yourself and fully understand what you're getting yourself into. And the first category is going to be game development. Now I use Godot to make my games. And if you don't know, Godot is an open source game engine that recently went into 4.0 and they're currently working on version 4.4 already, which is wild. The development cycle is really quick. It is an open source project, which means I could theoretically figure out how to go in, create a feature that I wanted to see in the engine and work through that whole process. I've never done that. Honestly, I probably won't ever do it. And if you are a contributor to Godot, thank you very much. I use Godot for 2D games and I use GDScript. What I really like about it is it has a great open source focused community of people who like to share their work without any sort of strings attached. And you can easily spin up a project and get it running really quickly with a lot of really robust tools inside the engine, but it doesn't have an insane amount of feature bloat, which means running a project takes seconds, downloading the engine takes seconds as well. I think it's like a hundred megabytes to download it and you'll never have to pay licensing fees and royalties. But the main reason I use Godot is simply because I've used it for about four years right now. So it's something I'm comfortable with. If you use other engines and you're comfortable with it, that's okay. Making games is hard enough. You don't have to stress out if the engine you're using is correct. I find that it's just really important how you approach your project, how you design your games, and then the rest of it is figuring out syntax and how to use the different tools. Now, I use the built-in editor for Godot. It's perfectly fine for me. I'm not someone who likes the hotkeys. My brain can't remember too many of them. So I simply use the Godot editor, which means I don't use VS Code or any sort of code editor like that. Although if you are using Godot, I believe you can hook up to VS Code or other editors or other stuff like that. The one other thing I use for my development process is going to be GitHub. And it's weird to admit it to you, but I don't use branching strategies. GitHub is simply a disaster recovery place for me. It is also a place for me to keep my old projects so that as I figure out coding strategies and systems I want in place, I don't lose that. I can think, ooh, in that prototype, I did something like this and I can go back in time find the prototype I used, copy and paste that code out and put it into my new project and keep running really quickly toward implementing the feature I'm trying to do. I think this next part's gonna hurt some of you, which is why I wanna make sure I show it to you. If you look at my current project, which is called Hexagod and the repository name is called Dice Village and there's no dice in the game anymore, which is immaculate from naming conventions. I absolutely love it. But if we look at my history, stuff, 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 and you guessed it, more stuff. And if you ask me, Aramis, what did you add on the 13th of August? I would say stuff. It is tr truly a disaster recovery tool. I've never, ever reverted it back. And so you're not going to be able to change my mind because I drive forward to finishing and completing games. And I'm not looking at my rearview mirror. Even if that means forward is driving my project off a cliff, I will undrive it off the cliff and fix the code before I revert to a previous commit version. I'm a pretty weird dude. I got some weird tendencies, but at the end of the day, I want to make content for you that I think matters for you. And I don't take sponsorships on this channel. I did once before it felt kind of weird. So if you want to support me further, go follow my steam page over on steam. There'll be a link below. I have 49 followers already, which is cool. Uh, and you can check out my games. Most importantly, there's chess survivors out there. which is my first commercial game, but I really want you to go check out Hexagon. It is my best game so far. And I hope you can help give me feedback to min max the fun in the game. And then you'll wishlist the game to help min max the, uh, the steam algorithm. Cause I've heard something really recently where the more wishlist something has, the more likely Steam is to show it to more players, hence getting you more wishlist. So your help here is going to be incredible. The next category is going to be project management. And for me, I use Notion as my one-stop shop 
for that. Notion is an online note-taking application. It is free to use, and there are premium features that you can gain access to for, I think like six months is kind of what the trial ends up being. You can access it from the web, and because of that, it has a backup that is on a cloud somewhere. You can then access that on your phone or other computers, and it syncs between all your devices really easily. That can be a downside for some people, and if you do not want that feature, Obsidian is a great another option that a lot of people end up using. I tried Obsidian recently, and frankly, I've been using Notion for about five or six years now, and I have a lot of stuff here. I'm comfortable with it. It has a great Kanban tool that you can create these cards and customize different pieces so you could organize your project like so. But at the end of the day, the main thing I use Notion for is just making lists. I will do lists for design ideas. So this is for my combat. I have written out scenarios in this list format, and then I will go through and iterate th through the list again and again and again. For me, the process of taking my ideas and putting them down into natural language and, and lists like this gives me a way of working through a complex idea and kind of logically structuring it. I can then go through and edit the list or, or maybe make it a, a numbered list. So then I I automatically start ranking things by importance or even just having a to-do list of things that I want to get done. At the beginning of a session, I'll review that list and pick something I want to work on. At the end of a development session, I'll go back in and add things that I still think I need to do and things I weren't able to accomplish. So my, my, my project management is really simple, lean, and sometimes I'll even just use a whiteboard or a piece of paper to quickly jot down an idea and then run toward adding the feature to my game. The next category is art. And art is something that's really hard because the player always sees the art. No matter how shitty your code is, how much spaghetti it is, if it just works and it's fun, people don't care about the quality of your code. I keep saying there's no bonus for making it work really well. It just has to barely work, just barely. But art is something that you see from marketing assets, you see when you actually play the game, and it really has this more multiple Applicative effect for the game. So recently, I've actually stumbled upon and fallen in love with doing vector art. And because of that, someone recommended I check out Affinity Designer 2, which is going to be my art application of choice moving forward. You can see here, this nice flat art style is really achievable for all my various tile artworks for my game Hexagod. And it actually worked out pretty well. Um, vector art allows you to scale things and use kind of equations to define curves and lines. And so if you come in here, and click on any of these uh, these ones, I can just easily come through here and start manipulating the curves to be something differently. And that allows you to scale stuff really nicely. There's some good export personas where you can export specific slices or sub assets, which allows me to import it into Godot and then manipulate individual pieces of the art to do in engine animation instead of having to go frame by frame by frame. Affinity Designer is a paid application, although there is a pretty nice free trial. Um, if you don't pay the, the, the free trial, it's 70 bucks. Uh, I think it goes on sale for about 50 bucks is what I ended up picking up for. And uh, it's a really, really good tool that I would highly suggest. But if you're looking for something that is a bit cheaper and uh, actually comes in the price of free, Krita would be a great option. Krita is free to download. Uh, it does have um, kind of a little bit of a learning curve to it. But once you get comfortable with it, I've, I've found it still great tool that I use even today for my thumbnails for this YouTube video you're seeing here today. Uh, it has a lot of features. It is missing quite a bit of stuff. Uh, its vector art system isn't incredible, which is why I switched over to a tool like Affinity Designer 2, but it is free and coming in that, at that price is, uh, is just ideal and could be a great option for you to check out as well. I'm now of the belief that doing pixel art, especially if you're new to art and new to game development, is a bit of a trap, and it's something I fell into when I first started learning game development. But if you do want a good pixel art tool, a sprite is going to be a really, really great option, something I've used for a very long time. And if I still do pixel art, it's where I come back and use. So it's about a $20 tool, great option. Go check it out. The next category is going to be sound and audio. And Although you can have really good art and really fun gameplay, if you want your game to feel good, you need good sound effects. And I always use this site called Zapspot, which has some free sound effects. Here's my, my disclaimer, go read the licensing, make sure you understand it yourself. There are a lot of categories out there with lots and lots of different sounds that you can go and click through and start trying out all of these different asks. These, look, look how many sound effects there are. There are so many sound effects. It, is, it can be a bit overwhelming to go find something because there's so many sounds you would have never even expected to be useful. But I have I've yet to have an idea for something and not be able to go find it over on Zapspot. There is a paid version. 
I have never used the paid version, but maybe I should check it out to see if there's something that's a bit better. One of the one of the problems with the free model is you can only download like five sounds an hour, and so you do get throttled a bit there, which kind of sucks, but just slowly over time add in those sound effects, and you should be get around it. If you're looking to edit the sound effects further, Audacity is gonna be a great tool that I use constantly. You can record other audio, maybe you have a voiceover you wanna do for your game, or simply you took a, a something from Zapsplot and you wanna either edit it down and trim out the, the garbage on the outside and pick a specific small part or you want to do some of these crazy effects that I've never even touched. I typically will like fade something out and, and fade it in or or maybe uh, increase the amplitude and the volume and amplify it up to make it a, a bit louder and, and stuff like that is how I've basically used Audacity to edit and layer and adjust the sound effects that I find on Zapsplat. The final audio thing I use for game development is a site called SoundDraw.io, which is an AI tool for generating music. And I know AI seems crazy. And I think generative AI for me personally is just plagiarism straight up. And I don't use it in my projects at all. But when I was looking for different tools to create music, I came across SoundDraw.io and I read through and I realized that this is an AI that is trained and created based off of in-house music producers that they paid to do just that. So it's not something that they ripped it off the internet and did it. And I'd, under, I'd, I'd recommend you read through the licensing. It is not a free tool. It does have a monthly fee if you want to pay it for like a month create the music you want to do, and then you can cancel it and you'll be good to go. It's a really cool tool. You can create the genre. You can change the tempo, the instruments, the theme. You can do a lot of stuff. It'll spit out a bunch of different music options. And then you can even go through even further and refine and like turn off the melody or make different things less intense or make it higher intensity or like bring back the drums for this portion here and turn them off here. And as someone who's not much of a music person but has an idea of what, what I want to do, SoundDraw.io is a great option. And I would love to hire composers, but currently for my project and my budget, I don't have it. I don't have the budget. And so a tool like this, where it was trained by musicians who are getting paid by this company to make more art, to refine their, their AI generator. I think this is a good middle ground where I can find a solution that is cheap within my budget, but also something that's not ripping off other artists work. The next category is going to be video and screenshots and stuff like that. Cause at the end of the day, you're going to need to be able to record your game to make gameplay footage or marketing materials and DaVinci Resolve 19 is what I use. In fact, it's what I use to make all of my YouTube videos and even this one you're watching right now. It is free to download, although the premium version, which I ended up buying, I think last year when I had a full-time job, is about 300 bucks and gives you some um, like hardware acceleration capabilities because this is a beefy application that can really hamper your computer's ability to function. So buying the premium version helps me out like that. This is quickly becoming an industry standard and is really, really helpful and useful. And I, for someone who's not really good at editing, has been a really great tool for creating my game trailers. To record game footage, I use OBS. I also use that to stream over on Twitch when I stream my game development work. This is a, a standard thing that a lot of people do. Um, very lightweight and easy to download and set up and is a great option. And the final thing for screenshots I use and have used for over a decade now is a tool called uh, called Screenpresso. And the really cool thing that Screenpresso does is it just it takes high quality screenshots and you can do sub segments if you want to like click and drag or if you want to do the whole area, you can click click and drag here and it'll create these really nice high quality screenshots and you can go in here and edit them further if you're like in a business setting don't just circle them in a weird way you can like add in notes and say like um, notes go here and uh, you have some notes on the page and you can draw arrows in a really nice way. And I think this sort of stuff really helps make your screenshots look a bit more professional. But from a game development perspective, this is how I take uh, basically HD screenshots of my games. And that is the list of applications I use on a daily basis to make my games and publish my games myself. Let me know down in the comments if there's a specific application you'd like to see kind of a how does Aramis use it type tutorial video. Go check out Hexagod if you haven't already. It is a very fun game, and I'd encourage you to go consider wishlisting it as well to help me out with that Steam algorithm. Until next time, I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.